face. That gets my goat. Let me see. I get you a goat. Anyhow, I, I hope I never reach that stage, and I, I don't know why we're recording, but I just we missed the beginning of that story, so it's not something we can use. Uh, but the whiz man doesn't fit you like the whiz kid did. That kind of powerful words. At least Ben Folds is able to write moving songs like he did when he was young. Okay, so this is That Gets My Goat. I'm Rich Outfield. And I'm Big Anklevich. And usually uh, we get together, or the the whole idea of this podcast was for us to complain. We'd have a little thing and we'd complain about it until we were complained out. Then we'd put it away and we'd go on to the next one. And at some point, it just became a, well, let's talk about something that we didn't talk about on the show kind of thing. And I think that's fine. I yeah. don't know. But there is something I wanted to complain about today. Let's just bring it back to the way it was. Okay. And the complaint is about complaining about The Dark Knight Rises. You're complaining about complaining about The Dark Knight Rises? Yes. Any complaints? I've got to complain about this line of complaints. Um, let's go back to 2007. It was the summer of 2007. And a teaser trailer came out for The Dark Knight, the sequel to Batman Begins. And it was a teaser trailer where all it showed was the new bat symbol and darkness. And you heard lines of dialogue from the movie. And people went nuts. They loved it like you love your twin sister. I It was one of those Annie Wilkes moments that I always talk about on the show where I was looking around and I was like, Are you, have you all gone insane? There's not anything on the screen There's no context for any of these lines. Why are you guys acting like this is the greatest thing ever? And they'd be like, because this movie, The Dark Knight, is going to be the best Batman movie, nay, the best movie ever made. Wait and see. And they showed pictures of what Heath Ledger, Heath Ledger uh, of all people, is going to play the iconic Batman villain, The Joker. And they'd be like, who cares what he's done before? This is going to be awesome. He, this is the Joker that people are going to think about 20 years from now. I know he's the guy from Knight's Tale and 10 Things I Hate About You, but he's going to blow away Jack Nicholson. You no, know, he, he wish he could quit you, but... Right. And then we saw pictures of what the Joker was going to look like, and it didn't look like the Joker, and he had long hair and this effed up face. And I mean, it, it, it didn't look like he had been dumped in some kind of toxic chemical, and it had turned him this way. He looked like an escaped mental patient that had damaged himself and then put on some kind of half-assed fright mask. And people were like, hey, in Nolan, we trust, man. This is going to be so great. You have no idea what you're talking about. Stop naysaying. And I was really scared that this movie was going to not be good. Because unlike you, I was not floored by Batman Begins. I didn't think it was the be-all, end-all of superhero films or Batman films or of Christopher Nolan films. It just bugged the crap out of me that they took all of the, the, the wonder and all of the magic out of the Batman world. And it's like, let's set it in a shitty, horrible world, the shitty, horrible world that you and I live in. Let's imagine that Batman lives now, here, And there's no immortality and there's no aliens and there's no killer crocs and there's no penguins. Just grime and reality. And Ra's al Ghul dies when you shoot him. And I was like, oh, thanks a lot, man. You you took a page from Brian Singer, but you didn't take any of the magic that Brian Singer... Well, I mean, there's no magic, but you know what I mean? It's just like you took the one thing that I didn't like that Brian Singer did. And you said, let's make a movie about that. I was talking about the X-Men movies. And I know I'm talking for a long time, but Batman Begins 2 came out summer of 2008. And I didn't want to like it because people were going to say, this is it. This is best picture of the year before it had even come out in Nolan We Trust. And it came out and I was wrong. And all of those people that said X, Y, and Z were right. Heath Ledger's Joker is awesome. And the movie was just really, really great and bold and brave. And now everybody tries to make their superhero movies like Dark Knight. Uh, You know, so like Daredevil needs to be more like Dark Knight. Let's reboot it. Spider-Man needs to be more like Dark Knight. Let's reboot it. Because Nolan pulled off this amazing, almost perfect film. And now he's made a sequel to that, The Dark Knight Rises. And we're starting to see little trickles. And there was a teaser trailer that actually showed footage from Dark Knight Rises. It wasn't just lines of dialogue over a symbol. And the fans have begun to bitch and complain and nitpick. And this is stupid. And this guy isn't big enough to be Bane. 
And why does Bane have some kind of breathing apparatus? And Anne Hathaway as Catwoman? What is he thinking? And oh my gosh, have you seen the costume that she wears? Oh, oh, it, wah. And <laughs> to my horror, they have become, I guess, what I was with those first Which two most Dark despise. Night films. Which is uh, yourself. <laughs> no, we have somehow ended up on opposite sides of the mirror. I am now saying, well, wait, wait. Christopher Nolan brought us The Dark Knight and Memento and Inception and Insomnia and The Prestige. In Christopher Nolan, we trust. He pulled it off twice. I'm sure he can do it again. And they're both like, oh, but look at her. She, she doesn't even have ears. She doesn't even have a mask on. She looks half-assed. She doesn't even look like she has giant jugs. I'm like, A, this is Anne Hathaway. Two, she has a mask on. Three, it has ears. I don't understand. How am I seeing something different than you? And we live in a world where there was a Catwoman movie with <laughs> Halle Berry in it and the worst costume ever. Ever for any superhero ever. I'm using the capital E word. And you're complaining about this gorgeous chick in a skin tight leather outfit <laughs> and a mask and ears and high heels. Well, well, do they want a tail? What No, they just want some tail. Well, I would too. Wah, wah, wah. And you know, just like the guy that they got to play Bane is not buff enough. Or he doesn't have a Lucha Libre mask on. But none of you had a problem with Heath Ledger's Joker. And it was so much more of a departure than Bane is or Catwoman is or whatever it might be. So I guess what I wanted to talk about is what has changed. Why now... Are people saying, oh, this is going to suck. This is not good. Oh, this is terrible. This is, oh, this is the worst thing ever. Why are they focusing on these things when there's a capeless Superman out there, when there's a, you know, a Spider-Man reboot already with a costume that's worse than the Sam Raimi costume rather than better? Help me out here. Well, this was what my thinking was when you started asking this question earlier today when we were at Wendy's. See, when I first got into comic books to begin with was all the way back in, gosh, it must have been around, two, when did the first X-Men movie come out? It was like 90... It was 2000. I was think. it 2000? I didn't actually see it then. I didn't see the movie until almost the time that the second X-Men movie came out. I rented the first one, watched it, and then I was like, oh, that was really good. I'm excited about this X-Men 2 that's about to come out. And so I went and saw that really soon after it hitting in theaters. The theater. Then I was really excited, and I thought, gosh, I love this stuff. And I thought, you know, I absolutely loved these X-Men movies. And I was thinking about getting some action figures of the X-Men movies. And I totally loved Nightcrawler from that film. And I was thinking, gosh, I want to get the... They had a big, like, 12-inch figure of Alan Cumming as Nightcrawler. And I just thought, man, that is the figure that I want to own and all this stuff. And at the same time, I thought, you know, I ought to know more it would be cool to read some of these comic books of the x-men so i started going to the library and checking out graphic novels of x-men and i started to get into comic books and i started to read more and more comic books and my knowledge base expanded and it wasn't long after that when i thought that's not nightcrawler that guy there that's a version of nightcrawler which was cool but it would be cooler to have the comic book action figure of Nightcrawler, the one that looks like the guy in the comic book instead of this one that looks, looks like, like the Cumming. movie and looks like Alan Cumming. And slowly my ideas changed to where I didn't think the movie figures were the cool things. I thought the ones that were the comic book figures were that way. And maybe that's what you've got here is a similar thing where people were just regular old movie fans at the time and then they watched... Batman Begins, and they were like, oh, cool, I can't wait for the next one. And they watched the next one, like, holy crap, this is so great, I want to know more about Batman. And all of a sudden, they're all reading Batman comics, and they've become comic book-centered, you know, and now they say, that guy's not buff enough to be Bane, that's not right. That's not the way Catwoman's supposed to look, she's supposed to have, like, a hood on her, you know, whatever. 
maybe that's what it would have got to be to ugly. <laughs> maybe they've gotten. I, I I recognize that there are some people that don't think Anne Hathaway is all that attractive. Yeah, everybody has their own tastes and whatever. That's that's going to happen. But uh, did they become too savvy? I, I I'm sure you've noticed it even in yourself. The people that know the material the most, the people that care about it the most, are the ones that are going to be the most upset when it deviates from what they know. When they're getting a movie made of Watchmen. Watchmen is the perfect example. I had an argument with a guy the other day because I, I love Watchmen. And I said, nobody will ever make a comic book movie as faithful to the source material as Watchmen. And he's like, that was all over the place, man. They changed the ending and there was a part in the movie of three lines of dialogue that weren't in the book you know and I was just like oh really I, oh, okay I, I thought it was spot on but you know each their own but yeah I mean there's there's going to be people that love that one thing the most and now I'm sure there's ten times the amount of people that are into Batman to that level than there was five years ago when uh, you know the first film was coming out I'm much more into Batman than I was in those days just because of the movies coming out. I remember going to see Batman Begins, my brother-in-law, who's a super comic book nerd, and he's like, oh, come on, it's going to be so cool. And he's getting all his friends to come see the Batman movie and, and everything. And I'm just like, yeah, all right, I guess I'll go. i probably see it sooner or later, I guess, so I might as well. And so we're there opening night watching it, and then I was impressed. I was like, wow, this is good. This is better than I expected. I haven't never been into Batman because... I didn't ever like any of the older films that uh, came out except for Batman Returns, which was pretty hot with Michelle Pfeiffer. <sighs> Somebody once said that I was really creepy because I liked Michelle Pfeiffer a lot as Catwoman. Wait, how is that creepy? <laughs> I don't know. Somebody said that my obsession for Michelle Pfeiffer as Catwoman was over-the-top creepy, but anyways... <laughs> Welcome to my world. I'm being accused of being creepy about everything. But, uh, yeah, I don't know. I, maybe it's got to do with that. These people have now gotten to the level of being fans instead of just being, you know, regular Joes that, hey, that's a good movie. I'll go watch it. And they don't care if Bane is realistic or unrealistic or whatever. They don't care if he's so super pumped with muscles that he's a comic book type character in real life. And so... They can enjoy it, or now they can't enjoy it because they, you know, they. Ex it's got to be just like faithful. It's got to be the way they want it to be, just like the real uh, show, so or the real book. Maybe that's what it's got to do with. I don't know. That's just a theory that I'm putting out there. Maybe it's just the longer internet exists, the more a holy people become. <laughs> because it seems like the internet is a breeding ground for a holes. Well, yeah, it'd be the freedom to say whatever you want with absolutely no consequence. People take that to the nth degree, and they'll, you know, call that somebody needs to be killed. Steven Spielberg needs to be killed for Indiana Jones and the Kingdom of the Crystal Skull. George Lucas needs to be killed for, well, <laughs> there's, a, there's a laundry list. But you know what I mean? People it's like will they actually say stuff like that when... At least they're not saying that about, like, the president, because they could easily be arrested <laughs> and considered they're threatening someone's life now. But, uh, yeah. But I, I, I think there's that kind of awful name-calling with politics all the time. I mean, it's just, it's, it's so ugly. And you can say you are like this and you're this and, you know, every word under the sun on the internet because it's anonymous and you'll never ever have to stand face to face with the person and back up what you said or realize that they're a person. Right. You know, that's something that is really difficult. I, I you know, there've been people that I've hated just absolutely loathed and stuff, you know, because of, you know, like the deal breaker kind of people or whatever that we talk right. about, like actors and stuff. And then I've been on a set with them or at a convention with them or, or whatever, you know, and they're a person. And as soon as I realize they're a person, I have to sort of change my attitude. Because instead of being a, a personality on television mm -hmm. or whatever, right. I realize that that's somebody that lives and breeds and has feelings. The very first time that happened really bothered me. And I, I remember 
my friend criticizing a, a comic book artist and saying that his, his art made him want to throw up. And he wrote that in a message board. And that artist got on there and said, I'm sorry that my art made you want to throw up. What, what was it? Which, which issue was it that bothered you so much? And my friend just like wilted and he's like, oh my <laughs> gosh. I shouldn't have said that. You know, it made him, it, it changed his whole worldview. The world is so big, but the internet makes it so small too. Right. It would be interesting to hear. I, I hope people comment about this, you know, the why and what. And, and you know, Batman is bigger than Christopher Nolan or, or Christian Bale or, or anyone. Um, he'll be Morgan around Freeman? forever. Uh, he's about the same size okay. as Morgan Freeman. Okay, that, that's all right then. Michael Caine and Morgan Freeman put together. But, you know, I I thought those Michael Keaton movies were really good. And Michael Keaton was my Batman. But that's in the past, and not a lot of people feel that way anymore. Just like not a lot of people see Adam West as Batman. But when you and I were little kids, that's who Batman was. Right. And there's a whole generation where the Christian Bale is Batman. The, The Christopher Nolan movies are the Batman from their world, but Chris Nolan has said, this is it. One more and I'm out. And and if that's true, then somebody else is going to make another Batman movie in 2015 or something like Joel that. Joel Schumacher. You know, Joel Schumacher should be killed <laughs> for what he did to Batman. Oh, no. And it's funny. I, I feel that way. I won't go see a movie by Joel Schumacher. But you don't feel like he should be killed. Yeah, Come on. I mean, not like, like quickly with like a pillow or something. Humanely. Like yeah. Well, like the needles and, and, you know, that puts you to sleep and you don't wake up. Not I, not horribly or, you know, anything like that. I don't know. I'm sure he's a person, too. He is a person, it turns out. But uh, somebody's going to take the up the baton after Chris Nolan has put it down. And it's going to be incredibly difficult for them to start again or, 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 or have a different take and all that. But... Their take is just as valid as whatever Chris Nolan is doing right now with Dark Knight Rises because Batman has evolved and changed and depending on the the society's mores and this month, I believe DC, uh, not DC, Warner Brothers is putting out an animated version of Batman Year One. And that's based on Frank Miller's reimagining of Batman in 1986. And that is the Batman for me. That is my Batman. It's just like, my gosh, this is the best Batman ever got. And it is. It's so cool because they've stayed more faithful than Watchmen in this, this film. But, you know, that may not be your Batman and they may not be his Batman and it may not be somebody else's Batman. There's no such thing as a definitive Batman. And if somebody takes a, a completely different take on it, and wants there to be camp again and wants there to be levity and wants there to be a boy wonder and stuff like that and, and puns. And wants there puns. to be... And bat shark repellent. A lot of people are going to rail against that. But honestly, it's that is part of who Batman has been. And just because we're in this era, I mean, the Frank Miller ripples still continue. It doesn't mean that somebody somewhere isn't going to say, and Dane Cook as Batmite. And everybody goes, yay, because some people somewhere seem to think Dane Cook is funny. And it's, Batmite is cool. And you know what? Batmite is kind of cool. Okay, may, maybe not. I'm sorry. Hey, don't hit me. No, no, don't hit me. I don't know. There, There's room, and, and it will be fun to see people do different things. And, do, and, and I, one thing that they said on the Spider-Man reboot is they're going to try and go a lot more with the wisecracking Spider-Man in this one even though it looks darker than all the other three. <laughs> but, you know, that's totally an interesting, valid take. That is who Spider-Man is. Yeah. As much as the brooding, I will never be loved, I will never get over my mistakes, Spider-Man, which is also who he is. Everybody is many things. Mm-hmm. And Batman can be a driven, revenge-seeking psychopath, and he can also be a super moral, good protector of the innocent. Right. Who wears a purple suit with nipples. Yeah, that totally works for me. Pointy, really pointy ones, too. Like, I want to take it a step. Madonna pointy cone nipples. I want that. I do, too. I, wait, wait. No, I don't want that at all. <laughs> I, 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 we've gotten out of hand. Take this back. Uh, well, that's all the time we have for today. I, and I, gosh, I've just steamrolled over you. Is, is there anything you want to say? I will be silent. No. Okay. Well, we will meet with you again, same bat time. 
same bat channel. I'm Ben Rich Outfield. That's right. I've been Big Ankovich. Talk to you later, folks. That Gets My Goat is produced under a Creative Commons 3.0 license. Sad but true.